Left Wing Kings. Listen, think, act, repeat. As you may have heard, Congress is divided on just about everything you can imagine. Both sides. They love to complain, but they won't work together to improve the infrastructure, create gun reform, or address the border crisis. So, Walanda, what's causing all of the congressional dysfunction? Uh, well, first, uh, congressional dysfunction. I mean, you're talking about they have a reluctance to vote. They're holding uh, one issue hostage to another, refusal to compromise. Um, back when, say, about 30 years ago, you didn't have those type of issues because you had a more diversified uh, population actually governing. So you had liberal Republicans, you had moderate Republicans, you had conservative, you know, Democrats. And we don't have that anymore. So now Congress is these two um, ideological consistent parties that have developed the same tactics and now they fight each other to a draw. So basically it's like chess and checkmate and I'm just going to hold you hostage until I get what I want. So there is no talking anymore. There's no compromise. It's about extremes, um, you know, within each party. You have uh, traditional conservatives, you have Tea Party conservatives, you have your MAGA group, you have uh, progressive Democrats, you have your old school, hard, you know, hardcore Democrats, red dog Democrats, and mm -hmm. getting the parties individually to agree on a certain issue, let alone to get them to uh, reach across the aisle and agree has become, you know, all the more, more, more uh, well, you know, difficult. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I don't know what's got, something's got to give, but I don't know what it's going to take to get, you know, to a part of me thinks that they think that is okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, as long as they did agree to disagree, they can always point the finger and say, the reason why this isn't happening is because look at those Democrats or the reason why this isn't happening is look at those Republicans. And it makes it easier for them to cater to their base. Like when we talk about all of the different uh, divisions, right? Like mm -hmm. they're divided within their own, <laughs> in, within their own parties. But have they become like so divided that they'll never be able to compromise? In my opinion, yes, because now the the whole hostage take, um, and again, like like George said, it's Democrats and Republicans. I'm not pointing fingers at one or the other, but now they use this hostage strategy. So as long as you use the hostage strategy, you you're playing only to win. So you never are going to give up until somebody you know falls. Again, there's no compromise in conversations. Um, we know that for um, you know examples like I said the the no raising of the the debt ceiling. You got to do deep cuts in popular domestic programs to get that. Like everything's extreme. You give me this, or you do this. And if you don't do this, I'm just going to hold it hostage, and then the bill dies, and we're back in the same situation. And again, they're playing to win. Republicans do it, and then the Democrats do it, and we just keep going back and forth like a little ping pong ball or a Rubik's Cube, you know, that you're trying to get the color straight. But unfortunately, if you don't get them all aligned and perfect, then it's just a lose-lose. We just saw it with the border crisis, if you yeah. want to call it that, where <laughs> they came to a, an agreement, yep. both parties, bipartisan agreement, yep. but somebody on the outside, Mr. Maga, told them, oh, no, don't co-sign it. Because if you co-sign it, that's something I won't get credit for if I get elected. Right. Essentially, I mean, that's essentially the, the, the card he was playing. And, of course, we all know he is the poster child for, you know, build that wall. So uh, if it's about keeping score and it's about, you know, who, who gets credit for something, even if they do agree, they won't agree because... <laughs> It's all about who's going to get the, the, the credit for it, right? And that's that's ridiculous. It should be you shouldn't you should you should you should. It's bad enough. The term self serving politician exists. It exists mm -hmm. because that's what most of them are. But it becomes worse when they make it blatant that you know it's all about. Do I what do I get out of it? It's not about mm -hmm. what you get out of it. It's about what you're consistent. It's about what's what's good for the people. Yep. And once you lose sight of that, you've lost sight of why you've been, why, you know, why you ran and why, why you're holding office. Exactly. So I was going to say uh, real quick, Wilanda, I don't know if you had another point to add on to that. But um, we talk about this division and not being able to compromise. It's crazy how there are like examples of individuals holding things hostage or creating rules. So mm -hmm. let's talk about McCarthy. Right. He was speaker. Just a small group 
of people stopping him from becoming speaker. He wanted to become speaker so bad that he let them implement uh, rules that said, hey, only one person can bring you up and get you kicked off as, as speaker of the house. Right. And that was just a small group of people. Right. And there's other bills out there that, you know, you have small, a small group of six, or, six or so people vote one way. If they band together, they can stop things from happening. And that's part of what they're doing to keep things hostage. And that's why you can't even get agreement on anything, because even when holistically, like it matches whatever they're doing, matches the ideals of one party. There could be eight people in that party who say, nah, we don't want to do that for whatever reason. And it doesn't even happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I was just going to bring up McCarthy. I was about mm -hmm. to say, I think they're afraid of being ousted as well. So it's like, if you don't ride with us, because now it's just party over your constituents, party mm -hmm. for the win. You know, if you're not riding with us, then, you know, we're going to kick you out. So once they they form that alliance or at least try to compromise to do what's best for the people, you see what happens. Because McCarthy, that's exactly what happened to him. As soon as he got on that bill with Democrats, they're like, oh, okay, you want to play with us? We told you to do it this way, even though the people wanted it. Um, now you're out. And so he's out of Congress in general. You know what I mean? So that's what I think they're afraid of, too, is their own uh, personal liabilities. Like, how is it going to impact them um, in the end game if they do start compromising and listening to their constituents? Because now the party, it's just so ingrained in them um, to do for parties versus over people. And yeah. the true so, insanity of it all is who holds the cards every four years? Who holds the cards every four years? Who? We. Mm -hmm. We the voter. But what do we the voter do every four years? Put the same motherfuckers back in. Yep. <laughs> the definition of insanity is what? Mm -hmm. Doing, Doing the, same the same thing and expecting, expecting a different, different result. result. Right. So why are we employing mm -hmm. the same mofos who we know, who have proven based on their track record, that they're not in it for the people, but they're in it for themselves. Why are we reelecting them every four years? We hold the cards. Yep. That is the time we get to say you're fired. Mm -hmm. And I hate to sound like Trump, but that is <laughs> that is that is well, the you time. Do. <laughs> that is the time we get to mm -hmm. we get to give them a pink slip. And instead of giving them a pink slip, we we re embolden them, we reinforce them, and expect a different result. So at the same time, we can blame Congress for not wanting to get along and not wanting to work together, mm -hmm. but we shoulder some of the blame because we tend to vote based off a of name. Yeah. You know, chances are if you're in LA, I'm not saying she's not the best candidate, but if Maxine Waters is running, are you gonna go against Maxine Waters? No, because she's the name, she's the name politician. If you're in Kentucky, even though Kentucky is a poor state, <laughs> are you going to go against Mitch McConnell and his turtle-looking ass? No. So let me let me let me kind of go back to to your point that you kind of started with and ask George this this question. You talked about uh, caring like more about the party ideals than they care about their constituents. So to your point, George, every four years they cater to us because it's an election cycle, or every two years or six, depending on you know what they're running for. So they will cater to us and say all the things that we want to hear. But as soon as they get in the office, it seems like the constituents do, are not their priority anymore. It's more their party ideal. So what are your thoughts on that? Do they care more about constituents, the party, or money, something else? They are all party before country, but do they really cater to us? Or do think about it. Think about And what all, they say. Not really. Most, okay, of the, most of the ads you see in any election cycle are what? Fear-mongering attack ads. Fear-mongering. You hear, I mean- but that's I catering to, to scare people, isn't it? But, but uh, what, what, how are you catering to your base when you're invoking the name of Obama, who hasn't been president since 2016, and you're still invoking his name in a, a political attack ad because you're showing a picture of- the Democrat that's running against your Republican candidate shaking Obama's hand because they hate Obama, and uh, that uh, that's that's uh, you're that is catering to them their emotions, their their feelings, and that's what like even when we when I make these titles for these videos, I got to think of something that's going to evoke emotion and get somebody to want to hey what are they talking about what's happening you know what I mean and that's what they're doing with those ads they they are catering to people it may not be catering to their needs but they're catering to their emotions, they're what's going to make them vote or react. 
That's my thought. Now, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm still kind of like, it's eh. It's a sad state of affairs. It's really, mm-hmm. It really is when when we have people who are one uh one 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 issue voters mm-hmm. that you know they don't they don't vote because of what the candidate represents wholesale they just vote because this mm-hmm. is his stance on guns this is right. his stance on abortion, abortion. this mm-hmm. is his stand you know you know you too too many single issue voters mm-hmm. and like you said fear, as long as fear mongering works as long as you can key in on people's emotions which is what mm-hmm. you know Mr. Moggett did uh as long as you can Use that and sway curry curry uh, uh, favor. Mm-hmm. You're never going to see anything change or anything get done uh, that's you know beneficial for for people as a whole because everybody's worried about you know their tribe mm-hmm. and what's been the best interest of their tribe. Right. And when you have all of this tribalism going along, you you know, you're not going to see. It's like if if it's not good for my tribe and in any way it benefits somebody else's tribe, then somehow it has to be bad. And they can't even see that, no, maybe it's good for all of the tribes. Yeah. But if somebody's able to point out how if it benefits this tribe, mm-hmm. it can't be good for you. Yeah. Right. And well, people fall for that. I, I would like everybody to click on the like button and join that <laughs> tribe, the like button tribe. Okay. <laughs> so if you like this video, <laughs> click on that like button. Make sure that you share it to all of the social media platforms out there. And if you want to hear more uh, common sense conversations like this, make sure that you subscribe to Left Wing Kings. Now, we got a comment on, um, looks like YouTube. Steve said, uh, not enough of us vote. If black folks voted like they should, Mississippi mm-hmm. and Alabama would be blue states. Remember I showed you about the population right. of black people in them states and how the, mm-hmm. you know, what percentage they are. Um he said, uh, "Would that uh, does it make it so that they don't really have to listen to their constituents because they're not voting?" I agree with that. You know, because now it looks like you don't have a vested interest. I give you an example. So we have this whole voucher and stuff in Texas, right? Well, now what's happening since it hasn't been passed? I mean, he is holding. I mean, just having temper tantrums. I'm not going to give you this. I'm not going to give schools money um, if you if you are a Republican. And you're not voting for vouchers. Guess what? I'm going to target you. I mean, that's the game that they play, you know. So just know that you not voting is hurt. You're hurting yourself. But I think a lot of people just aren't educated on what voting does for you. Like they don't understand the impact. You know, I'm not saying that they're they're dumb or anything like that. I just really believe that people are just not educated about the in, the empowerment of voting. You know, in a lot of those states, they're uneducated. If you look at it again, there's a correlation there. Mm-hmm. Then most of them aren't educated as well. My biggest thing is I think that we have a, um, like when you think of dysfunction, you think like, how does it occur? It's because you don't trust people. Like they don't mm-hmm. trust their actions. Yeah. They don't trust what they say, you know, that they're going to stick to their word. I think we have done so many, not we, but, you know, as far as in Congress, that they've done so many things that are so negative that mm-hmm. people just don't trust what people are going to say anymore. Yeah. I say, okay, I'm going to go vote in this booth. I'm going to go vote for so-and-so and then turn around and vote for the other, you know, yeah. or yeah. I'm going to take this money. And yeah, I heard you and I believe in this, but you know, Bob over here in a special interest group is giving me an extra, whatever that amount is. Right. So monetary. So I think people sell themselves. I think they sell well, each other short. What you just said goes to a point that uh, Peter asked on YouTube. Peter said, uh, he asked us a question. He said, didn't Trump famously say after he had been elected in When people asked him why he didn't do what he said he would during his campaign, he simply said, it got me voted in, didn't it? Touche. Narcissism. Yeah, but he's correct, though. I'm going to say what I need to say Mm -hmm. to get what I want. And then when I'm in, what are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing. Because you got four years to deal with me. Four years to deal with me. Just go along for the ride. Mm -hmm. But that's where, you know, George was saying, though, we got to step up. And, you know, if they're not doing their job, just like if you weren't doing your job um, at your current position you get fired we terminate Mm -hmm. but it seems for some reason we don't we don't do that to the people that are actually have a lot of control in what happens to us in our lives on a personal level whether it's monetary financially your health care you know so we have to get more involved so go out there and vote you you also brought up a point with uh, mike mccarthy and um you know fear like they have fear of compromise and um Mm -hmm. question that i have is a does compromise make these politicians a target. 
And does that impact how they vote on things? Definitely. I mean, if you look, you know, the easiest thing to to do if you go across the aisle and, you know, all for compromise, then uh, a political rival of yours is going to say, traitor, traitor, mm-hmm. traitor. He, he was with the Dems. Or he was with the Republicans. And, you know, once you get branded as a traitor, that's going to make it harder for you to get reelected. Mm-hmm. And what's sad is... That's what's that. That's what's problematic with a lot of these politicians. Are you in it to become a career politician, or are you in it for public service? If yeah. so, what you get, you're a traitor, and you don't get reelected. But at least you did the right thing for America. Yep. At least you can hang your hat on the fact that during your four years in office, you did at, at least once, at least one time, you did the right thing for America, and that should be enough for you to walk. You know, walk away saying, hey, I did my job. I was elected by the people for the people and I performed my duty as a public servant. But no, it's all about self-serving. It's all about, uh, you know, catering to lobbyists. It's all about Mm -hmm. knowing that if you become a career politician, you get to you get to become a speaker on the board for this company and that mm-hmm. company, and you get all of these speaking fees at colleges because that's what they they do. That's what they that's that's what they parlay their congressional careers into. Once they're no longer a congressman, some of them uh, go on these speaking tours and do things of that nature only to further enrich themselves. Nobody, few people go into Congress, a uh, few people come out of Congress poor <laughs> than they, <laughs> they did went in. when they went in. And look up AOC in a few years. Yeah. And, see. <laughs> and, and and when we say they, they don't agree on anything, we, we lie because they all agree to Money. raise they raise their salaries every every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the one thing we know that they can cons- come to a consensus on is when it <laughs> can, comes to pay raises for themselves. Can you say Liz Cheney? <laughs> I said I said that too. I was like Liz Cheney, oh yay. I mean she, she like did it. sacrifice. You talk about sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Now the, the crazy thing about Liz Cheney. One of the most conservative mm-hmm. Republicans ever. ever got ousted, mm-hmm. like by vote, not by you know impeachment right. or anything crazy like that. Voted out because of her stance against, you know, right and wrong, basically mm-hmm. against one person that mm-hmm. was just killing her party. That's called love a party, and like you said, Walanda, she became a target. Mm-hmm. People just was like, hey. <laughs> Not only to like her fellow politicians and her peers, but to people in her state. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and it's sad that you can stand up for what you think is right and just what we all know to be right. When you think of like good and bad, just generally, mm-hmm. we know what Trump brings to the table. And even though I'm not a conservative, I would ride with Liz Cheney all mm-hmm. day versus riding with him. I may not agree mm-hmm. with all of her stances mm-hmm. on things. But I, w- I respect her. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, she, yeah. And she has some type of moral compass. Yes. And I thought about that, too. I said, anytime we've had change in our country, it's typically at a plight of someone else. Right. You know, what I mean, like you have to struggle. So I think and I shout out Liz Cheney because I think she started that movement. Like I. Yes, I have. I'm a conservative. I believe in these values and these beliefs. But this person is wrong for this country. And it doesn't matter that we both have an R at the end of our name, I'm going to stand up for what is right. And so when people keep saying, make sure you're on the right side of history, Liz Cheney will go in the, in the, in the history mm-hmm. books as, as being such a person, you know? So I think your character, it, it speaks a lot for you. Um, again, I, I don't reside necessarily with Republicans and believe everything, but neither with the Democrats as well. But Liz Cheney, she definitely, she made a change. She's the one who kind of, I think, opened a lot of people's eyes up, like right is right and wrong is wrong. I mean, so show you just how uh, hypocritical and party before country, or or rather, as long as we don't lose, mm-hmm. you know, that's more important than than principle and idea. Think of the insurrection. How many Republicans were came out and spoke out against Trump during the insur- insurrection? But now those same Republicans mm-hmm. won't say a word. Yep. They won't say a word. They, they are they are silent. They won't say a word. They, they saw what happened to Liz Cheney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they won't say a word. And back to what you were saying about uh, uh, black you know black voters in states like Mississippi and Alabama. I got a gang of friends on face social on social media who are intelligent, 
who mm-hmm. who don't vote simply because they their stance as sad as this, this may seem white man will never do anything for me that that is that is they they that is the reason why they are apathetic that is the reason why they refuse to take part in, in in the process because they feel like uh the white man can't be trusted and if okay. if, if, if it was a white person that's running for office no matter what I, my beliefs are politically i can't trust him to do anything for me and they stay they will abstain from the process simply mm-hmm. because they do not trust white people to have the uh, black people's interests on any level. And that's sad. That's sad. It basically goes back to uh, the stalemate that's happening right now. What, what, what kind of picture are we painting uh, for the rest of the world by us not being able to agree on things because we're supposed to be the, the democratic leaders mm-hmm. of the world. And, you know, we are supposed to be the example. So what example are we setting for the rest of the world and also for our own country? Well, what I've seen is you're seeing it uh, happen in other countries where the far right parties, you know, the uh, the their their conservative parties are basically becoming more emboldened. And, you you know, you saw it with with what's this guy? <laughs> he was the British Trump, the bad hair, Boris Johnson. Yes. <laughs> you know, you saw it. You saw it in England. You see you've seen it in Canada. You've seen it in a lot of other countries where. The, the far right parties, the, you know, the, 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 the conservative parties that, you know, how you, I don't know if they all refer to their mm-hmm. r- their right wing as conservative in, 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 in these countries. But uh, you're seeing a resurgence or a uh, ups, uptick or upswing in the, those particular political groups uh, in, in these countries pushing back against. You know, uh, things like immigration, you know, mm-hmm. uh, then, you know, th- a lot of the issues that we're seeing here in America. So as we go, the world goes. So it's 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 sad as, yeah. as, as, as like you said, we are the leaders of, of the democracy uh, in the free world. And as we go, the rest of the world goes. So if they see that that's what they're doing in America, then that must be, the, you know, that's that's the way the wind's blowing. That's that's how we we, we got to copy. Mm-hmm. We got to follow suit. Mm. Yeah. And and that's the sad thing is that we're not being a good model right now, and no. that's why people talk about us a lot. They're like it's a lot of hypocrisy um, in our in the democracy that we have, or our so called democracy um, on that. And just like you said, we're the world stage, and so um, people are following us, um, and they're seeing the negative impact that's happening on them as well as we're living it every single day. So until that wind swings, I'm, I'm praying that it changes soon. Um, we're all destined for. I don't know. Not, nothing good. Yeah. Well, last question I got is a simple one. Will we be able to, or will Congress be able to agree on anything? What topic, if you could think of right now at the top of your head, do you think they might be able to compromise on? I don't I was, know. I was, I was hoping for silence. <laughs> I know, no. But it, <laughs> this is what they should do. Give legislators... The ability to legislate, right? You know how back in the day they were supposed to go up, and that's how I thought it was supposed to go. Like I will say, I want to put something um, forth, and then the House and Senate debate, and then they let members freely debate. And you don't debate as a Republican or a Democrat; you just debate the issue. Mm-hmm. And if we had that, then we wouldn't be having these problems. Like stop doing it as the Republicans did this and the Democrats. Just here is the problem. Here is my possible solution. Let's talk about it. Let's debate it. And whoever wins, wins. And let the best solution win. And that's what you do at work. You have problems at work and we talk to each other. And I'm sure we don't all have the same ideologies, but whoever, you know, comes up with the best plan or we can twerk that plan is what we do. So I don't understand why we're not doing that. 